Um, but but taking into consideration what you said about Eddie Murphy, right? Eddie Murphy, there's a self-awareness there. He he himself uh, understood, I am not one of the people that I am, that I used to do my standups in service. I'm no longer one of them. And I don't know if I can reach them in an authentic way anymore because they're coming looking for delirious. They're coming looking for raw. So his sense of awareness, I'll give it to him. If that's what kept him off the stage, so be it. Even if he loves comedy and he feels like the thing I love most, I just can't do because I can't relate to the people or they can't relate to me anymore. Now I'm just talking as a fan. Unfortunate for people who have high level success, especially in the public eye, whether, whether you are Mike Tyson, uh, whether, whether you are Eddie Murphy or Michael Jordan, when we pay our money to see you, unfortunate for you, we're coming to see the greatness that you once gave to the world. Jordan had six rings, but it was a big difference when he went to Washington, put on the number 45, ran up and down the court and couldn't dunk anymore. And people were so used to seeing, your name, your nickname is Air. That's, we came to see the guy who was high flying, the guy who could take over a game by himself. And I understand all of the challenges that you just spoke of. But maybe there's a sense of awareness that Chris needs to, to, to from, from, a, from a fan standpoint, unfortunate for him, you reach the pinnacle. You, you, you're top of the charts. You are people's favorite comedian. And when they come to see you, they're coming to see bigger and blacker. They're coming to see that person that we know and love. And when they feel like you're not operating at that level anymore, it is a letdown because they have nothing else to compare it to but you. You know, this is a uh, this is a deep show, man. This is a really, really, really deep show. Your insight, the topics that you come. You know, you told me that we did a, a, a pre- uh, uh, and people, you know, that people don't know this, you always do a pre-interview before you talk. Say, hey, this is what we're kind of going to be, you don't do exactly what we're going to be talking about. But you just said, hey, man, this is, you know, I'm going to be talking about some different things. I want to get your insight on things. I had no idea that it was going to go this deep, man, because I, I haven't been challenged like this in an interview, man, in a long time. Uh, uh, but you make, you, 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 you make some interesting points and you and I stand on different, because it's interesting for me to talk to you because you come from the standpoint of a paying customer. I Correct. come from the standpoint, and I, I mentioned earlier, when we come and we perform in front of a certain audience, and I don't want to make a sweeping indictment about black people because I love my people, I love brown people, but you know, I perform mostly when I'm in comedy club before my people. And I think we have to, I understand that, 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 that we're paying to see uh, bigger and blacker, but we we also have to go into it with a mindset, you know, for example, Jordan, you use that, people had to go into that realizing that he was older, that he wasn't the same Michael Jordan, that he wasn't Air Jordan, that he was playing for a different team, he didn't have Scottie Pittman, so I think you have to be realistic about your, your uh, expectations, or you'll be let down, I use the analogy about the girl, if you think you're going to sleep with her and you don't sleep with her, uh, it, it, it wasn't bigger and blacker. It wasn't those things, but I just liked it for where he, where he is now. And it's so hard. It's so hard in life period to duplicate yourself, to top yourself, especially like you said, when you're at the apex, when you reach the apex of, of, of a career and, 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 and 
I would caution all of your viewers that when you go see a comedian, when you go see an artist, when you go see Mary J. Blige, you have to give that artist an opportunity to swing from where they are in life now. And you can't hold them prisoner to the greatness that they have shown over a certain amount of years. You do them a disservice and you do yourself a disservice. And that's, you know, that's how I feel. Having said that, I thought it was great. I thought it was, you know, you and I saw it from two different lenses, but I, I, I thought it was great. And I think we can't hold people prisoner to their past work. And we have to go into, and this is the last thing I'm gonna say, and this is the point that I wanted to accentuate. We have to go into buying those tickets. We have to go into paying for that uh, uh, subscription with that mindset. And if we do that, we can free ourselves. But if we don't, we're gonna always walk away with some type of disappointment. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.